Hi Rockers, I'm really hoping that you've taken the time to watch the video I made explaining why Riders of Charity are supporting MIND. In this video I'm going to be talking about why we're supporting Alzheimer's Society. Now this is an incredibly important charity to me because I know how badly they need our help. My mum was an absolute fighter. For as long as I knew her, I mean I didn't live with her till I was six, but as long as I knew her she was an absolute fighter. She wouldn't let anything get her down. Whatever came along she would meet it head on. She was perhaps the bravest woman I've met. We may not have got along as a family very well, but for her as a person I had the most, most respect. She suffered about eight major strokes in her lifetime and had to learn to walk again and learn to talk. She had Addison's disease, epilepsy, angina, everything that came her way, she just met it. But vascular dementia just gave her absolutely no chance at all. It came along so incredibly fast and just swept her off her feet. And she was gone really before my brother and I really knew what was happening. The strokes had always left her a little bit confused, but suddenly the confusion was just so strong. And you can see on the screen now a picture of her in her early days of us trying to get her diagnosed. And then this is her just, just, a, few, just a few months later really. This disease is absolutely the cruelest thing I've witnessed because it robs absolutely everything from a person. It takes their humour, it, it takes their personality, it takes their memories. And you are left with a shell of the, of the person that you used to love. There's moments where um, they get some clarity and for a brief moment you get to see their persona again and then then it's just gone. My brother and I said that we felt our mum died a good a good year before she actually died because all that's left is a shell and that's horrid because you still love them of course you still got to look after them but they're just not the person they were. So if I can just jump on a motorbike and go for a 12 day ride to, to raise money and hopefully, hopefully help Alzheimer's Society find better treatment and who knows eventually maybe a cure then I'm very happy to do that. So this video I'm going to be joined by Heidi Wilkinson who is a community fundraiser and will explain everything that Alzheimer's Society are doing uh, and gives her a sort of a much needed insight into what is going on with this absolutely vile disease. Uh, apologies for losing it there a little bit, this video became a lot more emotional than I thought it would be. So um, yeah, I'm going to have a, a cup of coffee and then we're going to go and have a chat with Heidi. Come on. Good afternoon, uh, thank you so much for joining me um, today. I, I figured the best way to start is if you tell me a bit about what you do for Alzheimer's Society. Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Heidi Wilkinson and I'm a community fundraiser. And that means that uh, on, a, on a normal year, I'd get to go out and see people quite a lot because I work quite closely with the community. Anyone who wants to support Alzheimer's Society, whether it's businesses, individuals or groups and associations. So we could be raising awareness or raising funds. So you're engaged at grassroots level then, so you get to see all the fundraisers and uh, how much the charity means to people. Yeah, it's lovely actually. I get to work with so many passionate people and it really helps me to feel inspired to do my job as well. So, no, it's a, it's a, it's a lovely role to have. I, I really uh, enjoy it. Fantastic. Um, so I guess the first thing I really want to do um, is to talk about the term Alzheimer's. Because until recently I didn't quite realise exactly what falls under that category. Uh, my mum was diagnosed with vascular dementia um, and I guess that was a result of a lot of the strokes that she suffered, or at least that's kind of what we were informed by um, the GPs and the doctors. But 
this is just one condition that is expressed by the term Alzheimer's, is that right? So, so Alzheimer's Society supports people living with or affected by any form of dementia. And dementia itself is an umbrella term that's used to describe a set of symptoms, and that can include things like memory loss, difficulties with thinking, problem solving, language, motor skills, or even perception. And dementia is caused by damage to the brain, and it's most commonly the result of a disease. So Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's disease causes around 70% of dementia cases, but there are over 100 different types of dementia, including Lewy bodies, mixed dementia, and frontotemporal. A hundred different... Wow. That, that's that got to be very, very difficult to diagnose, then, I would imagine, because presumably there's different um, treatments and repercussions for what kind of... Well, I don't know what the right word is, category, I guess, you fit into of dementia. Yeah, definitely. I mean, no two types of dementia are exactly the same, which is why it is, as you say, quite difficult to diagnose. Um, so that's because these different types of dementia cause damage to different parts or different combinations of parts to the brain, which is why um, somebody with frontotemporal dementia, which affects this part of the brain, might have difficulty speaking. And um, we often say, you know, if you meet one person with dementia, you've met one person with dementia because everyone experiences things slightly difficult, differently. Myself and my fiancé are a bit concerned because my mum had, as I said, vascular dementia. And my fiancé's nan uh, also lived with dementia. So I guess we're a bit worried about whether it's hereditary. Um, I mean, is there any evidence to, to suggest that or is that folklore? So uh, the majority of dementia is not actually inherited by children and grandchildren, so it's not usually hereditary. In rarer types of dementia, there might be a genetic link, but this is a, t a tiny proportion of overall cases of dementia. So what is the kind of, is there a leading cause? I mean, you mentioned earlier um, head injury or, or head trauma to the brain could be a, a significant factor, but I guess the other sort of popular myth, hopefully it's a myth, is that getting old puts you at greater risk of getting um, a form of dementia. Is, is that correct? Um, it's not a natural part of ageing. So the fact that you're getting older doesn't doesn't mean you're definitely going to get dementia. And age is a risk factor to developing dementia, but there are other risk factors as well. And um, as we, we chatted about, dementia is actually caused by damage to the brain. And that could affect anyone at any time, unfortunately. So there are around 42,000 people in the UK living um, with dementia under the age of 65 at the moment. That's quite a high number that I don't think is sort of reported an awful lot. Why do you think that is? It, why do you think this stereotype is there that it only affects the elderly? Is that just a, a case of not enough awareness or not enough government information, perhaps? I think it could certainly be a combination of those things. And uh, part of our role in the in the charity is to try and get this information out there, you know, to dispel myths and tell truths about the facts about dementia and also to hopefully remove some of the stigma around it as well and help people to understand um, that it might just, it, you know, it, it's possible that it could affect people younger than 65. And um, also we hope to try and help um, support people who are living with it at any age, really. I guess this is one of the most beautiful things for me about doing the Riders of Charity is, you know, originally I thought it's a good excuse for a bike ride, at, you know, at the end of the day and raise some money for charity. What I didn't count on was, I mean, again, you know, we talk about stigma and stereotype. I think with the biking community, we think, you know, big, leather-clad, hairy, scary blokes, you know. But on some of the meetups I've been, we've got conversations there about mental health, uh, about personal well-being, about their own experiences with Alzheimer's. And I, I found it very kind of healing in myself, really. So I've not really spoken an awful lot about what I went through with my mum. And I guess that's something that people don't think about in terms of, people who are directly affected by disease, any disease, let alone Alzheimer's, but it's the people who care for them as well, the people who've got to support their loved ones that I think often get a little bit forgotten. And I think, as we said earlier, there isn't enough awareness for the disease itself, but perhaps there's not also enough awareness for those who are going through it themselves in terms of supporting people. 
Is that something Alzheimer's does as well, or are you primarily focused on um, the person that is actually directly suffering? No, we do work towards people who are caring for, so family and carers. Uh, we look to support them as well. And actually, uh, next week is Dementia Action Week. And we're, we're proposing a direct call to try and invite people to sign a petition to the government. And that's to try and help improve the quality of social care. So there's quite a strong video that I'll share with you actually later. Can I just clarify with, with the, the social care, what are we talking about there? Is that... Because, I mean, I, I naturally think social care, I think, you know, nursing homes. Uh, unfortunately, I had to put mum in a nursing home because she had, as I said, multiple strokes, epilepsy, Addison's. It was like a health bingo with mum, really, tick, a, tick one you can get. Um, so in the end, her health was so poor, there's no way we could have looked after her at home. And that certainly does bring an added burden, you know, and I felt guilty as a, as a son having to do that for my mum. So is that what you're talking about in terms of social care, or are you talking about care in the own home, or...? Uh, no, we're talking more about the the government support that's provided, uh, whether that is financial support for care at home uh, or quality of care across the UK and including consistency of diagnosis as well. One of the main reasons I've chosen uh, Alzheimer's Society is because I've seen an awful lot on your social media campaign and on your website about your continuing efforts to improve care and look for better research into prevention and cure. So is there anything that we can do as individuals to help reduce the risk of dementia in old age or even you know, developing um, dementia? So there's lots of research studies available, uh, mainly funded by Alzheimer's Society, that look specifically into understanding more about the cause and prevention of all types of dementia. And we can certainly do things to try to reduce our risks. So we know that stopping smoking, for example, lowering our alcohol intake, um, getting a bit more exercise, and just generally improving our overall health and well-being can all contribute to, to reducing those risk factors. Just a, a thought that's kind of popped into my head here, and obviously you can decline to answer this question if you want to, but it's just something I thought about. I was reading... Um, an article, I think it might have been in Psychology Today possibly, um, that showed problem solving is a, a key way of maintaining um, your sort of mental powers, so to speak. So things like jigsaws, um, more general puzzles, I guess, really. Is there any link there to, I guess, exercising the brain? Does that help? Or? I can tell you, I can't tell you any specific studies that I know of that, that link the two together. I'm not saying they're not out there. There could well be more information on the website about that. But one thing that I've personally noticed and I've been spoken to about on a number of occasions when I'm checking in with some of our other supporters, um, some who are carers and some who live with dementia, and that is that during the lockdown period, when they had less access to just general social um care general social chatting and and their groups that they found their abilities have reduced so it's like um the less they've been able to use the communication skills and physically getting around it seems like their symptoms have developed faster so i think that there is some evidence there that um if you don't use your skills regularly then the dementia could certainly develop or progress a little more quickly. Yeah, that, that's kind of interesting because when I think back to my mum, I mean, it, it was lightning fast. That's what really scared me. It was, you know, my mum has always been a fighter. She, you know, trained herself to Downing Street to protest and get more funding for Stroke Association. You know, she, she literally fought everything she went through. But vascular dementia came like a tsunami and it's like one minute my mum was there and the next minute it was just a shell. You know, and I do think back and wonder... Did we miss any warning signs? Were there more things we could do? Um, so I don't know, maybe like a community intervention or something, because um, that's got to be quite a difficult thing to actually intervene in the community and, and bring in, um, I don't know, some kind of community project that actively encourages people with dementia to be more involved physically and mentally maybe. I mean, is that something that you know, could be a possibility? Well, we do run quite a few different groups, um, support groups that, that kind of fit that sort of bill. Um, and that includes things like the Memory Cafe. So, for example, 
uh, the memory cafe is the place that somebody could go who's living with dementia and they can go with their carer if they like as well and, and during that session in the memory cafe they might be looking at things like memory boxes you might have somebody in who's a guest who's doing a craft project so there's those sorts of ways that we try to engage and enrich um, people's lives depending on what they're interested in um, because they can request a speaker to come in as well we have things like singing for the brain where we use music because music has been proved to have a really strong link with people with dementia somebody who might not be able to speak can actually sometimes sing the words to a song yeah. there's something there um, that they really can connect with so we have singing for the brain sessions as well where we um, have the people who are attending choose the songs and um, they can be from their era and then everybody will have a sing along to that kind of thing so I guess what a lot of people are wondering out there and I, I am as well um, we, we see on well, you know, we've got Stand Up For Cancer, we've got um, Red Nose Day, all of these major, huge fundraising for um, diseases that are close to everyone's heart. We don't really see that with Alzheimer's or dementia in the mainstream as much. But I guess we all share the same kind of hope with any disease is that we're going to find better treatment and a cure. So... Have we got any likelihood in the future of a cure or um, preventative treatment, maybe? So it's true. Unfortunately, there isn't a cure for dementia. So that's why it's really important that we've got to keep continuing our work in research. And that's going to help us to understand, first of all, what's causing the dementia and then to develop more effective treatments in order to cope with that and therefore to improve the care and ultimately our aim is to get to that cure. We really want to find that cure. And what kind of breakthroughs have you had? I mean, are you aware of any sort of major strides or experiments? Um, there are so many studies and um, innovative developments that are out there thanks to the research that we've been investing in. Um, I uh, couldn't list them all. <laughs> <laughs> I can mention a few. So we had the um, the jelly drops. I don't know if you've heard of those. So we helped support a inventor who created these drops, uh, which have water in and like a soft jelly outer container. Now the reason was that his relative she wasn't drinking enough water basically, so she was getting very dehydrated and very poorly, and she had dementia. So he couldn't just explain to her, "You need to drink your water." Um, so what he did was he did developed these amazing um, hydrating sort of sweets and uh, we helped to fund that. So that's gone towards the helping the care right now with people with dementia. Um, so the other one that I could mention, I can't remember the name of, <laughs> is actually a cuddly toy. And um, people with dementia, they, they still have very much an emotional memory. So if you have a bad day with someone who's living with dementia, they might not remember what happened that day, but they know they're not feeling too good about it, and they might be very sad. And the same with a good day. If you have a good day with someone with dementia, you might think to yourself, oh, they're never going to remember this. You know, it's, it was a waste of a day. It never is, because those emotions are there still. And even though they might not be demonstrating it, they will be feeling happy inside. Mm -hmm. So the, the fluffy toy um, is actually something that people with dementia can use as a tactile tool. So uh, it's for comfort mainly. And I think it's called, called hugs, but that's another thing we've helped fund towards as well. That, that's really well, almost tearing up a little bit there, because that, that's really quite interesting because my mum I don't even know where it came from this this toy that she had um, but she called it ZD uh, again I don't know where the name came from it's actually a bizarre name but she was so attached to this fluffy cuddly toy and I don't even know who gave it to her where it came from or what but it was always always with her and um, one of my sort of last really lovely memories of mum was um, we'd had a day where she had a little bit of clarity. Um, the nursing home had this wonderful thing where they bring animals in. And we had these um, little chinchillas, and mum was absolutely loving these little chinchillas. And we had a really great day. We had you know, good laughter. There's a little bit of mum's humour coming back. And she still had this toy under her arm. Um, and then we put her to bed and said goodnight to her. And I can't remember why now, whether I forgot something which is quite like me, I tend to forget a lot of things. 
I went back into her room and she was laid out <coughs> excuse me a second she was laid out on the bed with this cuddly toy and just this biggest biggest smile on her face and I remember saying to my brother right then that's the most contented I've seen my mum in months you know whether it was a combination of the fact that she was still holding that toy after we'd gone kept that memory in her mind long enough for her to really enjoy it and savour it um, you know th that memory for me was just uh, it, it was everything because um, not long after that she passed away so uh, yeah that's, that's nice just thinking about that, that cuddly toy actually and something you know so simple just allowed a bridge between the experience of the day and those brief moments of reflection when we'd gone um, and that, that will that will always stay with me that so yeah oh excuse me a second <laughs> I've got a cup of tea I think I need something a bit stronger but what's the time it's not allowed <laughs> Oh, okay, so, uh, the last thing I really want to kind of mention, because the reason I'm doing this, obviously, is because of my mum, and um, because, you know, I'd like to do my bit to help uh, Alzheimer's, <clears throat> to help Alzheimer's kind of get to a point where we can have better treatment. But I firmly believe that if I'm asking people to donate money to something, they should kind of know where it's going, you know? So I don't know how much we're going to raise. When I started this, I thought maybe two, three hundred quid. Um, we're already at two thousand. We've not even left yet, which is just ridiculous. Okay. So I'm really hoping, at the very least, we should be able to hand you fifteen hundred quid. Um, and now I know, in terms of the world, that's you know a small drop. But what kind of things might that money be used for? I mean, first of all, just thank you so much, Mark. You know, thank you and thank you to the riders of charity members and family and friends for, for doing this, for supporting us. You know, we, we really do appreciate it. Like all charities over the last year, Alzheimer's Society has been hit hard financially and by the pandemic. And we need people now more than ever to get behind our fundraisers like yourself, not only to help us continue with the research side of things into new treatments and ultimately to find that cure, but also to improve the care today, right now, for people affected with dementia. So that is what, where it's going to go. So, for example, our Dementia Connect support line is open seven days a week to anyone in Leicestershire, anyone across the UK needing dementia support, and people will be put in direct contact with one of our trained dementia advisors who can then provide information, advice, emotional support, and signposting to other local services where needed as well. So for every £10 raised, that can help to begin someone's Dementia Connect journey, which has been used more than 3.7 million times in the UK since the start of the pandemic alone. So our Alzheimer's Society is a UK charity working tirelessly to change perceptions as well. So we are funding research, we are improving and providing care and support for people living with dementia and their family and carers. As I mentioned, it's Dementia Action Week next week, so we are also campaigning the government. That's the, some of the fundraising goes towards campaigning the government, and we're encouraging people to sign a petition to the government with an aim to improve the quality of social care in the UK. So to put it in perspective locally, there's over 10,500 people living with dementia across Leicestershire at the moment. Just in Leicestershire? Long, just in Leicestershire. Wow. And for a long time, many of those people have been facing their dementia alone and without adequate support. And Alzheimer's Society, we're trying to, we're committed to ensuring the rights of people who are affected by dementia are recognised and properly supported. And you're helping us to do that, so thank you. Well, I had no idea the numbers were that high, just in Leicestershire. That's, that's a lot of work for you, because you're Leicestershire. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we've kind of covered everything there um so I, I just want to say again a massive thank you for uh, agreeing to do this because i've always said from the start with this it's not just about raising money because i mean you, you can do anything really to raise money it's not that difficult uh, we've got heroes of course like sir tom which you know did almost the impossible for him but you know we're just going to motorbike and can go on a 12-day jolly and raising money for you know charity so it doesn't have to be a difficult thing to be able to help somebody and I, I guess that's what I've done with all of my charity 
events that I've, you know, I've tried to do, is to show that anyone can make a difference. But in terms of fundraising, money is great, and yeah, it does make a difference, but I think what we're doing right now, the conversations are just as valuable. Uh, as I said, when I started meeting some of the people from the Riders of Charity and hearing their stories, I did not know that there were so many different versions or, or, or symptoms from Alzheimer's. I, I just did not know that. And I think if people knew more about what they were fundraising for, they'd be more inclined to support it. So massive thank you for coming here today and a massive thank you to Alzheimer's Society for all the research and the work that they do. Thank you so much, Val.